Alrighty, welcome back and to this, our second half of our performance lecture. Sorry about that, but it was just not going to work out with respect to getting all this content in in a 20 minute max limit. And I'm sure you agree we don't want to leave any of these learning objectives out because this is the stuff that's huge for you programmers on a day-to-day -day basis. This, this is what's going to make your career happen. So uh, let's jump back in now and pick it up from where we left off on performance and SQL. All right, see you on the inside. All right, I know I'm sounding like negative Nelly here, but this is 25 years voice of negative experience talking and no amount of hardware can fix bad SQL decisions and bad programming decisions. So if we just know about these things, we can avoid them. One of the big pet peeves for me is dynamic SQL. And you know what I'm talking about. That is, I build a long SQL string with embedded variables rather than using bound variables and then assign values to those bound variables at execution time. Here's the chase. When I use dynamic SQL, my optimizer needs to determine an execution path for that SQL on every time it's executed. Versus when I use bound variables, I only determine an execution path the first time I use that. And as such, you know, if there's a thousand users banging on my database, that's a big impact. Bound variables and bound variables only. If you use execute immediate command in PLSQL, I will find you and we'll have a discussion because I'll be angry. Okay, <laughs> it's, it's not cool. All right, uh, moving on to indices. Indices can be your friend or they can get you in deep trouble. Uh, depends on how we use them and then if we overuse them. Um, if you'll recall from your programming classes, B-tree indices are really nothing more than a bunch of tuples where you have an index pointing either at another index node or ultimately to a leaf node wherein you're pointing to a row ID going out to disk. Good news. By default, when you create a primary or a foreign key, on a column or combinations of columns, Oracle automatically builds an index corresponding to those. Cool. If you do a query where the predicate in the WHERE clause utilizes the values in that B tree, it's going to take advantage of that and jump right to the solution for you. Fast, fast, fast. B trees are good. Indices are good. Well, that's on the query side. On the insert and delete side, these B trees take some resources to maintain them. Um, you know, node splits cost money, or at least cost time. In addition, bringing that information into the uh, shared pool is not free either. As such, you've got to use indices in a smart fashion, particularly composite indices. I have seen individuals where they have very long Varkar fields as segments in a composite index. Really bad idea because you're splitting those nodes all the time. What's the chase? Oracle does a very nice job with respect to its optimizer utilizing B-tree indices and it will per increase performance on the query side a great deal. In fact, if Oracle can get you its solution set by just looking at the B-tree index, it will. It'll never actually go to the physical table itself. If you know it's just doing an existence check or you're just pinging on the segments that are making up the index, it'll never go to the rest of the table columns. Great solution. Just all I'm suggesting is balance that against your transaction processing on the insert and delete side. Updates can be hit, of course, if you're updating the index fields, but that's very seldom occurs, particularly with respect to the primary indices. So in addition, of course, that's why we use those fake integers because they're tiny. They make very compact and 
uh, efficient bee tree indices. One thing else on indices, and that's you can make an index only table. These are very cool. Um, the syntax is just create table, blah, 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 organized index. And it's not even going to create the physical table. It's just going to create the B tree index and utilize it. Fantastic solution with respect to performance for small reference and or base tables because they're not being updated very often. And bang, bang, you save one I.O. every time you go out there. And so free, free I.O.s are good. Oh, yeah, just check my notes. One more thing on indices, in particular composite indices. The order of the segments is important. Uh, the optimizer, if you put a where field equals six, and that field is in the middle of a composite index, it's going to ignore that index. Only if it is included in the segments that you're covering in your where clause are also covered in the initial segments of the index does it get to use that index it's not going to go looking in the middle of indices for uh, a where clause predicate one another huge one for me and also for your fellow users order by clause if you do an order by clause on the same columns that make up a index, and again, has to be the initial ones, can't skip into the middle, then Oracle will retrieve those rows via those indices, and it doesn't actually need to do the sort in main memory at all. You do it on something else, first name, comma, last name is a real standard one, and you don't have an index on those same two, it needs to do that sort in the shared pool. Not a big deal if there's only 20 or 50 rows like our tables, but if there's 2 million or 20 million or 200 million rows, all of a sudden we've got a big problem, particularly if you're not the only user on a database, and quite frankly, you normally wouldn't have a database if you were the only user. As such, caution using order by on non-indexed segments. Uh, might be better under a lot of situations to bring that into your 3GL, do the sort there, just do it do simple bubble sort or something like that. And, uh, or more common, the one that drives me crazy is somebody's retrieving a record set to be put into a grid where the header columns all allow for automatic resort anyway, but they put an order by clause on their select statement. Give me a break, guys. The grid supports that function automatically, and then it's local memory and not mine. Uh, give it some thought. Again, order by is just fine. If it's on the segments making up an indice, avoid it at all costs if it's on anything other, particularly on large tables. Finally, and this one is a golden rule. It just cannot be broken. And that's all those analytical functions that Oracle supports, you know, pivot table and cube and all the rest of that stuff. That stuff is great in the warehouse. It does not belong in my transaction or whole app database. Do not, do not, do not do that sort of stuff in my shared pool because I've got another thousand users trying to utilize that shared pool as well. And you're eating all of it on some stupid Excel-like function. I don't care if you want to do these Excel functions, but do them in the warehouse where, one, we denormalize a lot via these materialized views. And two, you're not competing against a whole bunch of inserts, which, by the way, are paying the bills. Okay, enough lecture on that. All right, lessons learned today. Big issue number one, connection pooling. Just do it. It's the right thing to do. Two, bind your variables. No dynamic SQL, period. No dynamic SQL, period. Third, and this one, you know, is kind of a approach avoidance kind of thing. Order by clause. If you're on an index set of index segments and they're the initial segments, you're fine because Oracle's going to retrieve in that order. 
anything else and you're talking about a large data set, you can kill the box. Not a great idea. Next, views and public synonyms. Just get them out of here. Next, um, materialized views are fine, but only within your warehouse environment. Indices, again, it's a balancing act. They hugely increase the performance on your select side, but balancing that out with, they degrade performance just as much on the insert and delete side. You do a large delete, drop the indice first, do the delete and recreate the industry and it'll actually get done quicker. That tells you what kind of impact these things have on performance. Okay, so, and again, remember, you gotta be using the initial segments in those composite indices. Finally, and probably the most in your face, and that's the use of these analytic functions like cube and pivot and things like that. Those live in the warehouse and only in the warehouse. I don't want you guys competing those things against an OLAP environment because you're, you're killing your fellow users. Okay, enough preaching. Hey guys, that's all the real content. In our next and final lecture, we are going to do an overall summary. So um, I'm looking forward to that. In the interim, you got there? Have some fun. I've learned something every day.